So if you're experiencing issues with limited space in some of your spousal sponsorship forms, here are a few examples on how you can provide additional information. So let's take the example of the form 5532 or relationship information and sponsorship evaluation. This is the form where people experience the most issues with space. So as you can see, part A sponsors employment history. There's only five slots here. So if you've changed multiple jobs in the past five years or even periods of unemployment, then you will most likely experience the issue with limited space. Same thing if you scroll down under address history of sponsor, if you've changed addresses multiple times in the past five years, then you might experience this space issue here. Similarly in part B, information about the principal applicant, if you scroll down under point two, do you have any relatives living in Canada? Obviously these are people other than your family members that you've already accounted for in your form 5406. And you could have many relatives living in Canada but again, the space is limited. There's only four slots here. Same thing for section seven. Do your close friends, family, and children know about your relationship? So if you check yes, then you have to provide details here and you may run out of slots here. So there is a very simple solution to this. If we go to the guide 5289, I'm going to link it in the description below. And if we go straight to the instructions of 5532, it says here, if you need more space for any section, include an additional page containing the appropriate section, complete it and upload it with your application. And for the document type, you can choose other. And these are the formats that are allowed, JPEG, JPG, and PDF. So let's come back to the form 5532. We'll take the example of sponsor's employment history. And then you can use the same logic in other sections. So the instructions state that starting with the current employer, if applicable, give details of all employers you have worked for over the past five years. Make sure there are no gaps. If you were unemployed, explain how you supported yourself. If you were self-employed, write the name of the business and the date. It was established and finally use the gross amount before tax amount for your monthly salary or income. So as an example, I've already filled this out for you and I'll just walk you through this example. So it says provide employment data for the past five years. So let's say you're sponsoring your spouse in November 2022. So you will have to provide data up until November 2017. That's five years. So what we have to do is we have to go from the most recent employer to the oldest employer. So I'll walk you through this real quick. From 2022 July to 2022 November, this is where I was working for. So it's just an example, RBC Bank, and I've written ongoing full-time just to indicate the position, the kind of position. Here is the complete address, the city, province, country, and the telephone number. Then here's the occupation, and this is the monthly gross salary, all right? Then immediately before this period, from 2021 January to 2022 June, I was working full time for JP Morgan. And this is the address. Again, complete address. Here's the position. Here's the salary. Then immediately before that period, from 2020 July to 2020 December, working in Capital One as a consultant. Here's the complete address. This was in the United States, occupation and the salary. Then immediately before that period, 2020 January through 2020 June, I was unemployed. So I've listed that here. This takes care of no gaps. And then under occupation and position, I simply wrote not applicable and salary was zero. Then a period immediately before that from 2019 May through 2019 December, again working for Capital One as a consultant. Here's the address in US, occupation is tax analyst and here's the monthly salary. So as you can see, there are no gaps in time from one period to the next. This is 2019 December, immediately after that is 2020 January. This is 2020 June, immediately after that is 2020 July. 2020 December, immediately after that, 2021 January. And same here, 2022 June, immediately after that is 2022 July. So there is no gaps from one period to the next. That's what they're expecting. And because my current position is still ongoing, I'm still working here. If I try to write ongoing or present here, it doesn't really allow that many characters. So if I try to write ongoing, it doesn't really allow it. If I even try to write present, it doesn't allow it. And that's why I wrote ongoing here so that they know that this position is still ongoing, all right? So if you're working in your current position, you can simply write ongoing or present to indicate that you're still working there, all right? It's not an issue. I did the same thing. So now, as you can see, we've only provided data until 2019 December in this table and we ran out of space. But we have to provide data until 2017 November because we have to account for the past five years. So this is where you run into a space issue and then you can provide additional information in a different document. Let's look at that. So there is multiple ways you can approach providing additional information. You can use a Microsoft Word document or a Google document or a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. 
and provide details about all your additional employment information there. I use the Google Docs method, so I'm going to show you how that works. But obviously, you can apply the same logic to any other method also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my drive, Google Drive, click on new and simply open a blank Google document. Then I'm going to select this insert option and simply insert a table with five rows and five columns. And I selected five rows and five columns so as to be consistent with this format of the original table. All right. So here I can write to date here from date, then employer, then occupation and then salary. And then you can start providing all the remaining information that you could not provide in this table. So I've already populated this and this is how that table looks. If I can take you back to the original 5532 again. So the last period we provided information was 2019 May through 2019 December. So we have to provide information for periods before 2019 May. Okay. So coming back to the table again, as you can see right here from 2018 January through 2019 April. So a period immediately before this last period is accounted for here. Again, this is the name of the employer. It was in the US occupation and the monthly salary. And then a period immediately before that from 2017 August through 2017 December. So unemployed. So again, this period 2017 December is immediately before this period 2018 January, right? So no gaps in time. And then the period immediately before this. So from 2017 January through 2017 July working for Vanguard in the US as a data analyst and monthly salaries listed here. So as you can see, no gaps from 2017 July through 2017 August, 2017 December through 2018 January, 2019 April through and then coming back to this form 2019 May and then 2019 December to 2020 January and then so on and so forth. So that's how everything that you could not provide in this table here, you can provide in a separate table. So this table is a continuation of this original table. Okay, so I've also added a heading here, the name of the exact section and the part in the form that this table is pointing to. So it says section part A1 sponsors employment history. So this is just to make it easy for the officer to understand and locate this information. All right. Also, there is a section in this form that asks you to explain how you supported yourself if you were unemployed. So I've written a little more text here down below, just a couple of lines here saying that I, the sponsor Suresh Gautam was unemployed two times in the past five years, initially from 2020 January through 2020 June. And then after that, from 2017 August through 2017 December. During these times, I supported myself through the money I had saved up from my jobs preceding these periods. I've uploaded bank statements from those times to show sufficient balance in my account that was enough to support myself. So this is just an example of how you can write additional information about how you supported yourself during your unemployment periods. Because for the most part of my five year period, I was employed, I didn't really need this section but it helps. You can write something like this and then you can attach proof of your financial statement or your bank balance statements to prove that you had enough support during your unemployment periods. You can also write something like you were receiving money from the family on a consistent basis during your unemployment periods or you were on employment insurance, anything like that, which basically proves the idea that you could support yourself during your unemployment periods, all right? And by the way, if you've held multiple positions during the same time period, you can also account for them in this separate additional information sheet. So just create another table and list all your positions that you held during the same time as your other position. It's not really a big deal, all right? So once you're done with this additional information sheet, the next task is to label it correctly. So this is where you'll click and this is where you can provide your label. So I've just labeled it simply 5532 additional employment history of sponsor, just to keep it simple and short, because sometimes when you make the names really long, your upload might fail. Also note that I've not put any special characters such as any slashes, hyphen, quotes, or underscore in this name, because that often can also cause an issue with the upload in the online portal. So just keep the name simple. And then what I'll do is I'll click on file, hit download, and then PDF. And here is my file. Just a quick check to see the size. It's 49 kilobytes. It's a PDF document. The label is intact. If I open it real quick, it looks clear enough to me. All right. So now it's ready to be uploaded. So now I have two options to upload these. I can either combine the additional information sheet with the original 5532 document and upload in a single section in the online portal, or I can upload them separately in different sections. Let's look at how that's done. So I'm inside the online portal. And if I scroll down in the forms section, I'll try to locate 5532, which is right here. 
and I can upload the original 5532 combined with the additional sheet that we prepared as a single document here or I can just upload 5532 here and then I'm going to come down to the supporting documents section and here I will select the other category as we saw in the instructions in the guide 5289 click on upload and simply upload the file that we just prepared. So as you can see, the additional information history of sponsor is uploaded here successfully under the other category as a PDF document. By the way, you can also upload the document if it is in any of these categories. So it could also be a doc file. So basically just directly taking a Microsoft Word doc file and uploading it here or a docx file or a PNG, JPEG, JPG but I just uploaded the PDF because PDF looks much more cleaner. So now when the officer opens up your file, he is going to first look through your 5532 and they are going to realize that you have not provided five years of employment history for the sponsor. Then they are going to come down to the supporting document section and look for something that provides additional information about this 5532 form. So labeling it this way will help the officer to quickly locate that information sheet that you uploaded and then they'll be able to make sure that yes, the complete employment history of the sponsor is provided. All right. So you can do the same thing with any forms where you're having space issues. So let's say you're having issues with the character length of names like 5406 or 0008 or the form 5669 is not allowing you to completely type your full name because of character length issues. Then provide what you can in the form and then provide additional information with the complete full name and because in your additional information there's not going to be any character limit so you can write as much as you want and then label it correctly with the name of the form and what kind of information it is supporting so that it's easier for the officer to locate all right for details on how to write letter of explanation for documents that you could not provide that video is here and for forms and documents that you don't need to submit for your spousal sponsorship that video is here i'll catch you in the next one bye